ball in the rear view mirror, but so much going on. People look at the draft a lot, but there's a lot more that goes into the offseason for these front offices, is there not? It certainly is, and then even before we get to the draft, you start with the combine. You know, it's held in Indianapolis every year, and you have about 350 of the top prospects coming together to get their physicals and interviews and on-field performance, and all that will get evaluated along with their game tape. And then you've got the free agents, all right? That starts, I believe, in early March, where now the free agents can start moving around to different teams. So your team's starting to take a little bit of shape there, free agency, because then the draft's coming up. You're trying to put your team together with new draft picks, have everyone start to, start to move in one direction. And then you have the OTAs and mini camps. We get to see them on the field for the first time. And we start to get a better idea of how these teams are going to look when the fall begins. They come out with one back and three tight ends. There's a carry for a former starter. This is TJ Yeldon. Just a one yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Brad Nortman on to punt it away. Back deep for the Texans is Tyler Irvin. This will be fielded at the 17. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now out comes Houston. He's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Now Osweiler on first down. To the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. There's a running back who was a receiver on the play. I think he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Here we go now. Green. From midfield now, here's Osweiler. Oh, nearly picked. 
And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. On third down, Osweiler. He finds his target, Fuller. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Texans have an edge in time of possession right now. The Jaguars look like they'll be in this game for four quarters. We're set up for a great second half, so let's get you out to it. Here's Brandon Guyton. All right, thank you, Larry. Plenty of intrigue to come. A one-point game as we get set for half two. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show him one thing, hit him with something else. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. And there the man coverage, not good enough, partner, and they're able to complete the pass. Excellent recognition of the man coverage, and they found the guy who could win downfield. Second down, Ivory. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. He had a great read there from his free safety position. And, Charles, you know with those guys, it's all about their eyes. They have to be laser-focused. Yeah, I had to fake my way through it when I was playing, but now I can see exactly what they're doing. And on that play, he obviously had no presence to feel like he's being pushed for a pass. And without that, that allowed him to get up to the line of scrimmage and hold him to no game. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Two. Call it a gain of five that time. They'll be left with a third down at about nine to go. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Thomas, the lone receiver left. Here we go now. Ooh, Throwing his Bortles on third down. Finding time. And oh, he's going to be hit and driven into the turf. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. 
Here's Brad Nordman now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because Tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> So the offense has it first and 10. So the scoring dried up here in the third. Nothing that quarter for either side. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Osweiler trying to lay one up deep and nearly picked off there. And it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. And a sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They isolate Hopkins on the left side. Again on second and ten now, it's Osweiler. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and two. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration of the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Here's Shane Leckler now in punt formation, but as we've seen, that's no guarantee he'll punt the football. And how about this, a fake? And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. Well, not only did they try to fake it, they put the ball in the arm of their punter, and it didn't work out. Not the quarterback. No. The, the punter. Oh, yeah. yeah and Risky. It, and it's so funny because when it works, genius. When it doesn't work, not so smart. Not so genius. In this case, not so genius. I do admire that he went for it. Now a play fake here on first down. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. And it's second down. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. He'll try and burn some clock now with Ivory. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It's a loss of two, now third down. 
And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. On any pass, well, the Texans are going to stop it as a signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And he missed it. He missed it just wide of that left upright. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that will loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Throwing. Osweiler. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. Give him 16 on the pickup, and that'll be good for a Houston first. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Prince of Mukamara. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, I always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of a team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence. And now the Texans want to call another timeout. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And at this stage of the game, time a factor, time on their side as they just try to eke out the final precious moments of this one. They'll give it up to Ivory. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Yeah, they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. They give them a gain of 37. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Fresh set of downs here. They stay on the ground. Ivory again. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they covered things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, 
is block the guy at the point of attack and then climb to the next level and get the linebacker. When you're not allowed to climb, you got a free hitter, and that's what we saw there, and a really nice play resulted for them. Offense. Still second down. one stacking up the running game they've got to feel good about themselves but something has to be in the back of their minds are we being set up for something big they've got to be careful Try and run some clock with Yeldon. And he'll get this out to about the 38-yard line. Just a yard on the run there. That's going to bring us to a fourth down. I like what they were thinking on defense. Just guard the first down sticks. Don't let anyone pass that. Didn't matter whether they threw it or ran it. They just ended up rallying to the football on the running play and stopped them short of a first down. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. So long from Houston. And this is the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's the Titans going up against the Texans. The opening kick is straight ahead, so it's time to turn it over to my colleagues, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis with the call. Gentlemen. All right, thanks, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the heart of Texas at NRG Stadium in Houston. Today, it's a good matchup in the AFC South between the Tennessee Titans and the Houston Texans. 
Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now. And both of these teams have top flight sitting callers. Ryan Suckup, the man tasked with getting this one started. And in front of a raucous crowd, this one is underway. On the return, here comes Keith Mumphrey. A little 360. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So offensively, the first series getting ready to come up for the Houston Texans and Brock Osweiler. You look at what he did last year, Charles. 15 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. So much talk about the quarterback position in Houston. What does he need to do to solidify that spot going forward? I think he's got to make plays that are not scripted by the head coach, Bill O'Brien. Meaning, yeah, you can draw it up and this is how it's supposed to look. But will he make that play downfield that hurts the other team and Bill O'Brien is not game planning around his quarterback. He wants his quarterback to be the focal point. Make those throws. Hit DeAndre Hopkins. Make a big play. If they're able to do that, if Brock Osweiler is able to do that, he'll take firm control of that offense. Brandon, if I told you in preseason that DeAndre Hopkins would have less than 1,000 receiving yards, would you have looked at me funny? I would have. He's coming off a 1,500-yard season, and he's gotten better each and every year through the first three. And they have weapons around him now. Will Fuller can stretch the field. Braxton Miller, when they get him back healthy, he can fly as well. They got Lamar Miller as a running back in free agency. They've got people who can stretch things open and get the ball to Don Jerry Hopkins in open field, but he had a connect. He rifles one that's intercepted. It's picked up by Bryce McKay. repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings we need some plays from our defense here on the road early they got one and don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them you gonna let that happen guys is that how we're going to play and they responded to the challenge now here's the first carry for demarco murray and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. It may sound trite to a lot of people, but when you have a team that actually does believe in you, it really helps your overall play. And DeMarco Murray found exactly that in Tennessee with the Titans. Because he didn't really have, you're alluding to him, not having that in Philadelphia. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, look, he started as the guy there. By the end of the season, he was no longer that guy. The offense didn't seem to fit for him, but it fit perfectly in Tennessee as he led a big-time attack, third in the league in rushing. Yeah, finishing just shy of 1,300 yards, 12 total touchdowns as well. On third down, Mariota. Blitz coming and down he goes. Brian Cushing with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And now the Titans' defense gets set to go again. And now Big Moe's wearing a shirt of their color. They're hoping to continue that momentum in their direction, but maybe another pick. Who's Big Moe? He's momentum, right? Momentum. <laughs> and right now, he's hugging them. shake off the interception he'll look to throw he's gonna rifle oh this is taken in it's complete a pickup there of 37 and it's good enough for a houston first down 
A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? You sometimes you have to go. It's caught at the 10. A pick up there of 36. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal. The last drive, he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know right, there's no quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win the game in the end. I believe I understand where the offense was going there. They just hit a big pass play, thought they could fool them with a run, but maybe they overthought it a little bit. Just hit a nice pass, come back with another one, keep the momentum going. So an even first quarter on the scoreboard, but the threat of points on the horizon. Nothing, nothing, our score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Snickers. You're off your game when you're hunting. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. Weiler on second down. No, oh, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. Well, he just threw an interception last drive. Nearly another pick. And things aren't very even right now, are they? It's a little bit sloppy out there, isn't it? It's kind of different driving on those paved roads and those country roads that have those potholes in them, isn't it? Because that's the way this game's going right now. A lot of bouncy bounce to it. You spent some time on some Tennessee country roads. I certainly have. Plenty of family back there. God love them. Not only did they drop what looked like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. On is Nick Novak now for the Texans field goal. This is a 26-yard attempt. And Novak's kick is good. And it's now 3-0 Texans. And we were scoreless up until this point in the second quarter. Now we finally have a little action. Let's see where this action takes us. First quarter, no points at all. Now we've got our first score of the game. Well, does that signal that we're going to get more as we go along? Or will it revert back to what we saw in the beginning of the game? Now it's Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. Antonio Andrews now to return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Houston defense, we watch as they get set to go. And a big reason they've got the lead here in the first half, some of these hits we're going to see here. Almost like they're a group of superheroes, right? to it, you, you sort of take it for granted. You really do, but he is so good that every team in his division, every year, is trying to make sure they draft people charged with trying to block J.J. Watt. So far, hasn't been too successful. That was second down run for Murray. A gain of a yard gets him back where they started. Now it's third and ten. 
Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because they, you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Mariota from the gun on third down. And he locates Walker complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, the size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? A first down throw for Mariota. And Matthews over the middle with a grab. A gain of six there on first. So applause here for us as well. Time to pay some bills. We're back to Houston after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have highlights and analysis of this first half. And guessing mostly defensive highlights that we will see. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. No touchdown scored yet so far. Yeah, none whatsoever. Second down, Mariota. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. So here we go, first and ten now. Mariota on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Brian Cushing in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Throwing is Mariota. Trying for right and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jonathan Joseph. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with during a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. And here comes the Texans now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three. It's caught inside the 25. A big time play there for the Texans. 41 yards. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big-time play right there. Now Osweiler. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. And speaking of Lamar Miller, up over 1,000 yards this season for the Houston Texans, five touchdowns as well. And the second time in his five-year career, he topped the 1,000 mark. And he did it missing two games due to injuries. I just think of what the numbers could have been. But looking forward, he's such a versatile player. 
I would not be surprised if Bill O'Brien adds a little more to his plate in 2017 and throws the ball a little bit more to him out of the backfield. Get him into space and let him create bigger plays that way as well. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. On second down, here's Osweiler. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. They come out here in the eye. On third and goal, Osweiler. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's.